Hey there guys, it's Celine. Today is Monday the 27th of June and it was raining cats and dogs here in the Netherlands uh, this afternoon. So I decided to go ahead and do Lisa's, what's it called, unicorn spread? Or even just uh, the voyage of the lost unicorn, something like that. I will put a link to her video that I watched um, maybe an hour ago or so into the description for this video. So down here, down below, you know, um, because you really have to watch it in order to see what it is that I'm doing here. I believe this might be a considered to be a VR to her video. I will certainly put that in the title because um, I was interested. I find um, the thing is that I don't really know The Lost Unicorn at all. It is a movie and a book, I think, and certainly also a tarot deck that Lisa Pepez is really fond of. And she's used several times and she's gotten great mileage out of that deck, I'm sure. And um, it's completely sort of you know, her type of story, it's very obviously more than just an aesthetic thing, even though the deck is really beautiful and there's all sorts of good things that can be said about it. Um, I think that with her spreads, the way she showed it, um, it was just a way to get really close to the subject material and to sort of pick up on things, subtle things, work with subtle things that are happening in... Um, in the story as well, you know, where you sort of make the story come really close to you by using those actual cards. I so get that. Yeah. So for me, it was a bit difficult. So if you want to watch this video, I really recommend going to Lisa first and watch hers and then at least get a hold of those spread questions as uh, she gives them on a sheet at a uh, point early on in the video. And also to really watch what she's saying about, um, you know, different phases of the story, different stages of the hero's journey, one way of looking at it. So I felt that I wanted to do this spread for myself, however, because I don't really know the Lost Unicorn story that well, or at all even, um, I had to go from... Her spread positions, which are in blue marker over here, to a combination of the cards that came out for that spread position. So here's the Nine of Swords, here's the Eight of Wands, here's the Queen of Cups, and so on. Those are the cards that came out in her um, in her video, okay, in her spread that she did for us, and then she interpreted those, okay. So it's kind of it's kind of fiddly, which makes it really entertaining and really fun, certainly for me also, um, because I had a kind of a need to do this for myself. So I kind of then went to this column here, where I basically uh, put in a few keywords that actually tie it together in a way for me, make it applicable for me in a way where it isn't so much about the lost unicorn anymore however i enjoyed the search for the self was actually what i was wanting from this and the challenges to what we think is the self and then how we think about things and how we respond to things and so on and so it kind of got slightly, I don't know, slightly murky and a f slightly tricky for me to figure it out, which is why I decided to use these astrological symbols, because I'm an astrologer, and those kind of make things more, slightly more neutral, slightly less on the unicorn side, even though I can still keep that in the back of my mind. But I, ha I kind of see it, it kind of takes me somewhere. And there is the idea of having basically an um, 
a comfort zone where you don't really know, in my case, for these cards that I drew in the end, um, it is about me not knowing originally who I am, okay? It is about identity, about self, basically. And I had to make my own um, hero's journey, my own interpretation of a progress report, if you like, or a process like snaking through these cards and see where these cards would take me. So it goes in levels, okay? I start off with Lisa's, uh, pro her, her um, spread questions. Then I add onto that her interpretation based off of the cards that are also lost unicorn material where you get a really an insight into who is who and what they're doing in that particular position, in this position or in that position. Each of those cards that she pulls has characters from the movie and they interact with the stages of the main character and so on and so forth. So that gives a whole lot of, <clears throat> sorry, that gives a whole basis of, a basis of, knowledge if you like of what we're talking about and the process is about more um i suppose about stamina and about challenges and about perfectionism and things that are coming out of these cards right the she pulled for me i wanted something that was different i wanted something that was using this sort of a uh, blueprint see where i got if i use my um, you know, my planets here and my, th my things to see what comes out. These are my own cards and, um, these I then connect with the comfort zone, with the carnival very strongly, the old beliefs and the enemy and so on, you know, so that's what I kind of did, but I used my astro as a support system literally you know as a as a way of making sure that i am con connecting them together for me okay so i'm redoing it for me in a way that isn't about the lost unicorn anymore if this makes any sense gosh that took me seven and a half minutes to explain <laughs> it turns out that what i get in my cards here you can see there's a whole lot of red and orange because it has to do everything with my new sense, newfound, what with my practice and all my other things these days. It has to do everything with whether I believe I am a, I am a person, which is a weird thing because I come from a very narcissistic background with a lot of problems and a lot of uh, unresolved trauma and you know bad stuff going on so the the spread itself these cards show me actually what it is that I have been doing in terms of the energy towards myself over the past couple of years and so that is pretty cool I get um, starting off a position six of pentacles they're really pretty cards I have shown these before there's the six of pentacles very peaceful very sort of self-involved this is me before my soul retrieval experience okay I was completely um, focused in upon myself somehow I just didn't have any connections to the outside which is a very negative way of looking at the Moon and Taurus, uh, Six of Pentacles card. Uh, but you might say I was asleep in many ways. So then I go through a whole set of cards here where for me what stands out a lot really is the Five of Hearts, the Lost card, that's this one. And because it is in the Carnival position here, um, which I think is kind of cool and which I tie in with Neptune as a mirrors and lights kind of a thing for me if I see that in a five of cups kind of context um it means 
drama. It means that emotional people identify with their emotional lives so much without necess necessarily anything ever changing. And to me, it does feel like a carnival. And there are uh, parts in my background that make me kind of critical and or um, that make it impossible for me to really believe that that is all that you are, all the emotion, I mean, all the drama. It is not all that you are. So because it's Neptune, it is meant to give you a theater of life and a kind of like um, everybody acting out a part and so on and so forth. It's a performance. So I have actually uh, got some uh, ancestry that was in the circus back uh, 150 years ago. And there are actors and musicians in there with uh, with that a group of people and it really is a carnival of emotions and that is absolutely my carnival is the carnival of emotion of emotions if you like i have always found that really challenging and i get these weird moments for example where i uh, have uh, friends that i tried to contact uh, last week about my plants that are going to need watering over the two and a half week period when we will be left, uh, you know, out, leave them here and I will be out of the country. So I uh, send him a message which uh, has happened before and he tends to always answer his messages within a day or two, you know. And he didn't answer me this time. By now I've got an answer and it's all fine and everything's fine and dandy, you know, nothing going on and he doesn't mind taking care of my geraniums in the slightest, which, I, which is what I expected. However, I've had at least three or four times a day, I've had a panic scenario in my head, in my brain going on like, he doesn't want to see me anymore because I just don't really know him that well yet because we just kind of got together and it's just, he's a, he's a kind of a friendly character and I've known him for a couple of years very from a, from a distance in kind of a semi-professional capacity and that's all there is to it so I'm really insecure and I was so insecure last week when I went to visit him in his own house which turns out to be his parents house and blah and blah and blah and blah and blah yada 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 on and on <laughs> it just turns out that I get these scenarios in my brain and it's drama and it's a carnival of emotion and I I'm very capable of driving myself completely nuts over, because that has happened to me. There have been a number of narcissists in my life that I was strongly connected to either in family or in work uh, uh, so, sort of situations and contexts. And I was just completely incapable of um, escaping their clutches you know, of getting out from under their power. And uh, I've experienced what gaslighting does to you. And so I am never completely sure, <laughs> which is why I love YouTube, because then, you know, I get a couple of views and everybody, hi, and thank you very much for watching. And there we are, you know, and I don't need to be afraid of the, of the whole power play that much over here on the channel. So, yeah. So, um... Going from there, I have uh, originally in the Lost Unicorn, uh, sort of the unicorn spread, we get the different helpers. There's two different helpers that have really different qualities. And my cards that come out are the chariot, respectively, and the five of wands. And I'm really surprised at how many wands cards I get because I get the five, the three, the ten and the nine for these positions right here, okay? So I won't go into a ton of detail, I think, because boring and just has taken too long already. However, the whole thing sort of centers for me, after all this scribbling and fiddling, around real self and real identity, where um, after what I've been through, you know, more and more, it the Ace of Pence, in the position of the self-doubt and red bull position, you know, the face of the enemy kind of a thing, kind of a thing going on, which is represented by Pluto here, you know, 
Uh, it's the bottom line. I get the Ace of Pentacles. So where it turns out I do have an identity now, okay? Because I worked really hard to to have that. And I said, I wrote underneath here, a self that is shown. So maybe that helps, you know, where I believed, I used to believe in a dream of self, like up here with the chariot. And I went through these stages where I have to sort of be critical of what it is that is thrown at me. My critical spirit is my best helper here, my number two helper. And then from there, I go to a a sort of a a state that is a challenge really where my old beliefs are really centered about the need for human attention and validation and then you know the three of wands yes you have to do sort of do a lot of tweaking here but this works for me where not it's not because everybody says that something is great that I am going to do it. Not in the slightest, not not anymore. I want the true value of things. The Saturn here, the, the Saturn in Leo, the five of ones means for me what is the value going on here? It's a it's supposed to be a competitive card. Here's the five of ones in this uh kind of format, they're not really actively fighting that much which I appreciate because I don't believe that Saturn in Leo, which is the basis for this card, you know, uh, is about putting up a big fight necessarily. It is a disagreement, yes, between the two energies, but it's much more about all the planets in Leo. It's about, okay, so what you're going to show me? Show ahead. Go ahead, show me what you got, and I will just sit here with my arms folded and wait what comes out. You know, kind of passive also with Saturn. So through this process, God, I'm hoping I'm making sense. Um, I will see, I will gain critical spirits and I will gain what it is that is really being given. I will be able to um, sort of, not bypass maybe, but really... Um, mentally decide that whatever really works for me, that is what I am going to do, okay? And I won't do things to please other people so much anymore because of the human, you know, the human attention, the way the, way the tribe sort of wants you to, wants to absorb you back in always. Having a self for me. Okay, this is how it works for me. This is what the cards are telling me also. So going from there, I get very strong cards. The ten and the nine of wands here in the purpose finding empowerment positions here. Okay, with the king of swords at the end. So these three are all about the outcome, the process towards the outcome. And... The nine, uh, sorry, the ten of wands, I, which is given uh, the, the term oppression, the key word oppression, or even overcommitted, you know, and exhaustion and all those familiar terms for the ten of wands. I would transform that into a phrase that says here, go ahead, make my day. Okay. And it's like a, um, what do you call that? A quintessential form of the five. I will see what is being served here. The five, okay. Oh, I hope this makes sense to somebody out there. And the result is a purpose, okay. I don't have to do everything. I don't have to do anything, really. Because my outcome card really is the king of swords. And it is kind of unemotional, hardly emotional at all, because for me, what I felt over the whole of those years, searching for who I am, 
and who I'm supposed to be, what with my background and my history and my genes and all the rest of it. And everybody's, everybody's perspectives on everything that I got sort of force fed all my life. My mother's, my father's, it doesn't matter who they are. They're always in there everywhere. And what I need most of all is the exact right perspective for me at that particular time. So when I'm really stressed out about something, it is always because I don't have a perspective. It is always because my mind is going berserk, is going bonkers, because I am trying, I am being force fed somebody's poison. Okay? And I need to step away from all that, even if it means a heavy, heavy load. And even if it means making decisions that nobody understands and so on and so forth. In order to exist properly, you know, that's what I have to do. And all that getting together, um, it's just something that doesn't really work for me because I've been, I've, that's not my path. I am not a, I'm not a gregarious person and I go to a I go to a wedding celebration and the the music is just so loud that it becomes acutely painful and I just have to run away. Story of my life. I don't do social gatherings even though I like to think I am gregarious and I care about all these people and I am supposed to want to be a part of the carnival. You know? It's not my path. So I love my cards. I love the spread, even though I had to sort of fiddle it around a bit. I didn't go all the way into all the astro details because that was just a little hinge for me to make it a little more, um, a little more general, a little, little easier to apply. And so if you want to know the first position, the safety comfort zone, I associate it with the moon, the confusion so the confusion in identity like who am I really kind of a deal you know or you're not alone as a unicorn where is the other where are the other unicorns that kind of a thing is a question that I um, put under the heading of Mercury from there we go to the carnival that being Neptune the challenging helper if you like is Mars the most helpful or really um you know, supportive helper is Venus, which maybe makes sense to me as a female. And if you're another, if if you're another type of gender, you might switch these around, and that would feel better. It's quite possible. This is where it gets really interesting. The castle and the distraction, I would equate with the South Node in the horoscope. The Red Bull. And the self-doubt and the fear that it sort of engenders in people, I would equate with Pluto or Uranus for that matter. Might as well, because, you know, why not? It just depends how you look at those things. Sorry for the wobble, guys. My left hand doesn't want to hold the phone anymore. Um, transformation, realization. That's Jupiter over here. Empowerment and inner strength is Saturn right there. And the outcome and the un unicorns that are found, the North Node. Okay, so just in case there's anybody who really wants to <laughs> have this go into your ears, then you have them in the row right there. Maybe because I explained my cards and my process, maybe now the planets also make sense somehow. So, yeah. Um... I hope you like my bag because I made a ba I made the craziest, I think the craziest bag in all of tarot deck, um, you know, uh, bag accoutrement history. These are all ribbons that I sewed onto fabric, and there's a sort of a scarf fabric in the middle in the lining like th like so and there's actually a little bag that has a couple of those pompons as well and this is it and that's what the cards go into that's the scarf right there because it's easier and the bag this bag is way bigger so i can uh, just add things in there other uh, 
I've got a crystal in there that I really want to keep with the deck. And I was just, isn't this just hysterical? I thought this was just so much fun to mix up these wonderful, um, you know, rub rib ribbons. And what do you call those? They're one, two, three, four, five, six different types of um, types of goodness. So there. Thank you for watching, you guys. <laughs> I hope this wasn't too chaotic. And uh, I had so much fun with this. The deck is actually really proving itself to me. But then again, you know, it's tarot. It will always work. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Ciao.